Welcome everybody. My name is Paul Hieronymus. I'm the vice chair of the Ohio Distance Learning Association, your Ohio affiliate of USDOA. Um, thrilled to be here with uh, having some great present presentations. We're going to see from some of, all, of some of the country's best content providers. Uh, but with that, are you excited about the content you're receiving? When you want to just get more action and more information, well, you can actually become a member of Ohio DOA as an associate for free. Yes, that is right, for free, you can become an associate member by clicking on the link at the bottom of a page. We have a little bit.ly link there for you that you can go ahead and click. Uh, with that, we also want to make people aware of the project that we have worked on over the summer with the Management Council where you can actually purchase professional licenses of Zoom at a discounted rate. So we worked very hard with the Management Council to help choose the right platform. Zoom is one of the one that made the most amount of sense. And now we are happy to say that you can actually buy a pro license of Zoom for $10 that would be purchased through your ITC. And uh, you'd be able to have large conferencing capabilities, hold recording uh, storage, the CRCs that allow you to be able to connect to H323 video conferencing, and of course, Zoom support. So with all of those great, exciting things, we hope to see you online. And now I'll turn this over to our, pres to our presentation. Cleveland Museum of Natural History, my name's Lee. I've been teaching here for a while. I don't know, since 2007 or something like that. And high schoolers, the most engaged, ready to interact, alert, excited audience you could possibly imagine, right? Absolutely. That was me in high school, totally. So our job is to say, hey, high school students, why should you be paying attention to the stranger that you're only going to see for an hour out of your life and then maybe never again? It's because they have really important stuff to tell you about jobs, about careers that are out there that you might not have even thought of. And that's what we do here is for all of our high school audiences, we try to match up all of our pro, I shouldn't say try, we do match up all of our programming with some kind of nifty career connection. And we now have an even brand new series of interviews that I'm doing with people who have really interesting science careers. To help keep me on track, because I tend to get going and run over on my time, I'm going to go straight to our website. Here we go. Ooh, teen night at the museum. Very exciting. Look, we're even bringing high schoolers here to, act. well, not quite sleep overnight, but they're going to be here for a while messing around with me, learning about dry ice and stuff. If you go to our website and you click on that magic word, learn, my friends, and then scooch on down to school programs, what you will see is the different ways that we get our programming to you. So if you can come to us at the museum, if you cannot come to us, but we can get to you within an hour and a half drive or so at your school, I'm going to focus on the interactive video conferencing because that's what we're doing right now. And as I scroll down, I see some videos that explain how it works. I see the technology information. Cool, that's all words on a screen, don't really care. But then I get down here to the topics, health and life science. Oh, that's young kids, one through six, two through seven. Where's my high school stuff? Oh, let's, see. oh, wait a minute now. What's this? Climate change? Oh, that's right. We're not scared, folks. So if you're going to be talking to high schoolers about climate change, either the impact that we are having on our atmosphere right now or the impact that our atmosphere is therefore having on us, notice the name. I'm very proud of that one. Climate changing our health. Weather get it? We're ready or not. What we do is for those programs, the uh, science-based one where we're talking about the how it's working in our atmosphere, is we send you a kit full of stuff. Now, a lot of content providers do this. I have a kit sitting right here next to my lovely assistant. That's Anita. Have you helped me out here? A little box full of stuff I'll show you here in a second. So a little box of stuff shows up, and you have things like simulated ice cores, and that way we could talk about, gee, if you like being really cold and you're thinking having a job in the snow might be cool, you could be a scientist who works with the teams that go to Greenland ice uh, glaciers and dig up these giant ice cores. And then when we're looking at the ice core, we're talking to the kids about what could be stuck in the ice and asking them what those layers represent. So that way your kids have something in their hands. It's a nifty replica. Obviously, it's not a real ice core. What is something cool you could be passing around? Plus, we, then we can talk about the fact that, hey, who made that? <laughs> it was some guy named George who works nearby the museum, and he specializes in 
doing cool acrylic things and we asked him to make us a nifty fake ice core and he did that even though he had never done that before. So we're tying it into not only the research type jobs but also the neat link to art that we have here because many of the things that we use to teach somebody had to make that thing and had to come here to look at the actual objects to then recreate that real thing. So there you go, climate change, we've got one topic down where we are talking to high schoolers about some pretty serious stuff. What's this? Human evolution? Ha <laughs> ha! We're not scared, folks. We're going to talk about that, too. And not only are we going to talk about it like me talking about it, but check it out. If you were to add, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's really small, our website cmnh.org forward slash IVC, standing for Interactive Video Conference. If you were to start typing in the word career after that instead, what you're going to find is this page, so cool, talking about my career programs, da -da -da, where I'm interviewing folks. Oops, that's the archive. Hold on. There we go. Here's the same page, but with the career, and talking about the interviews that we're doing. And if I scroll down just a tad, these are all showing the dates of when I'm talking to these scientists. Look right here. This guy, Don Johansson. Do you know who that is? You should know who that is. Don Johansson, back in 1974, was the boss of this museum. But they sent him to uh, Ethiopia to dig around, look for some bones. And guess what he found? He found Lucy. That's right, Australopithecus afarens. As you know her, you know her. She was the first creature that we think was ever walking around on two limbs, bipedal, showing that we don't have the lock on the market on that. Lots of other hominins were doing it before us. And we wanted kids to really feel that moment of what <laughs> discovery that Don Johansson felt way back then when he found these bones and the crucial bones that showed him that that little creature was rock walking with an upright stance. So in the box that we sent to you, what you have is you have copies of bones. Another opportunity for us to talk about casting technology, how this particular guy who works here, David and his team, Beth and Nicole, prefer the molding technique as opposed to 3D printing, because 3D printing is cool, but molding allows some details that you just can't quite get in the 3D models yet. Who knows, it might change in the next couple of years. So there's a bone, that's a human femur. I'm gonna extract out of the box, yeah, this is the box, look, it even shows you how to pack it up. You get this box of stuff to your school, but we also have a chimpanzee femur, and then, sorry, that's loud next to the microphone, and also a replica of the femur of Australopithecus afarensis that Don Johansson found. Now picture this, you're standing on a, a dusty puncher rock somewhere in the middle of Ethiopia, it's hot, you've just pulled out these little chunks of bone and you're saying to your team, wow, this is a femur, I know that's the thigh bone, and we can do a little quickie test right now to see if this creature was actually built to walk upright, let's go to this angle, there we go, or if it was walking on all fours. And here is the super simple test that you do. I'd be having your kids do this in the classroom, tell them to pull out the femurs. There's also pelvis in there too, there's a chimpanzee pelvis right there. I'd tell them, all right, take that bone, that femur, stand it up on the table and make sure it can stand up on its own. If it's standing up on its own, I know the bottom of it is flat on the table, because if it wasn't, it would fall over. But is that bone straight up and down? No, nah, it's got an angle to it. And that's because humans have great big hips and our bones have to adjust for our great big hips because the bones that are down here, the tibia and fibula that go down, you know, down below your knee, those have to be going straight down in order for you to have a proper center of gravity and balance, right? So this very distinctive angle to the femur is unique to us bipedal creatures. All right, let's take the chimpanzee put that down make sure oh, don't drop your femur it's very embarrassing there we go uh, lean you okay fine he's not gonna lean this is why i have your kids do it i'm not doing this in the classroom your kids are doing this there we go okay so now you can definitely tell that with the stay femur balanced precariously nope the human femur is leaning and the chimpanzee is not fine now I need a third hand. However, if I get Lucy in there, Australopithecus afarensis, and get her in there next to the chimpanzee, look at this, folks! Ta-da! We have the same tilt as the human femur, which means that right there, sitting in that dust, hot, sweaty, this guy said, whoa, dude, I just changed our history books. How about that? So your kids can have a little moment of, eh, it's pretty cool, and uh, discuss all these femurs in the classroom after we're done chatting with you. You send this back to us, eventually these kids roam around the country. It's kind of fun. So there's another way that we keep kids involved and interacting with us and engaged is we're throwing you some hands-on stuff. Let's take another peek 
at that web page here and scroll down just a little farther. <laughs> drugs! That's right, we're not scared, folks. <laughs> we're okay with talking about drugs. And we tie to all kinds of nifty things like, gee, when they dig up ancient Neanderthals, sometimes they find evidence in their coprolites, their fossilized poo, that those guys were using drugs that are banned now by the uh, by all of the FDA type all over the world. Everybody has said, you know, we probably shouldn't be using that much ephedra. Why? Because well, it makes you have a heart attack and then you die. That's a bummer, right? But it's a really powerful stimulant, kind of like super duper caffeine combined with a little crystal meth. It's bad stuff. And the Neanderthals didn't know that. But we can see evidence from their poo that they were using these drugs. So using drugs is not a unique thing to modern day humans by any means. And then if we really want to up it by a notch, we could throw some specimens at you for that class. For example, let's see if my camera's gonna go, hey, look at that, a couple of lungs hanging here. Some of you might have these in your classrooms. They're big lungs, but they're about the same size and shape as a large human. Those are healthy lungs. Those are lungs that have been stuffed full of cigarette smoke, and we can pump them up with air and make them pretend like they're breathing, and then ask the kids what they're observing about the functions of those lungs. I can obviously zoom in a little closer there, but I'm just teasing you with a far away view. Interesting side note, this is the pig's right lung, and you might notice that it is not inflating at all, and that's because your trachea goes straight down into your right lung, but it kind of bends off to the left to head into your left lung, and there's your lung trivia for the day. When you pump pig lungs full of smoke, the right lung tends to get glued shut. Not the best situation or outcome for the pig. And as we continue down our listing, hold on, let's take a little bit farther. Truth and consequences, what's this? STDs? We're not scared. <laughs> we'll teach that too. And because it's kind of a tricky topic, I mean, talking to high school kids about sexual behavior and their private parts and how to keep them all healthy, sometimes we have to give them a little moment of, oh, let's just look at something kind of cool and neat so we're not completely panicked the whole time. And I'll wrap up my presentation here with something cool and neat that we use to uh, keep those kids not panicking over the fact that they're learning about sexual behavior. We show them actual specimens. Now, I happen to have my uterus out here. We do have testicles as well. I left them in the other room. Sorry, that's a tease. I can't get to see my testicles today. But these are all real human specimens. This is a plastic model, kind of thing that you usually see in a textbook, right? Is it looks sort of like a weirdo alien. This is supposed to be the uterus. These are supposed to be the ovaries. You got your little fallopian tubes or oviducts cruising out above. So when you're discussing ovulation, you have an egg cell pop out of here, cruise through the tube for a couple of days, make it over there to the uterus, and if it has been fertilized, theoretically it will stay there and develop into a human baby. But then, wait, there's the Billy Bay segue, right? Wait, there's more! There you go, that's a real human uterus. So if you show them that first, they're like, what the heck? What am I looking at? It's just a gray blob, right? But if I show them this, okay, so now we can see the relationship to what they did with the model versus the real thing, ovaries, uterus, vaginal canal leading down, oviducts over the top. And that way they're like, whoa, cool, I got to see real stuff <laughs> during this class that's actually really inside my body. Neat. And there you go, folks. So yeah, believe it or not, talking person on a screen can engage and keep your students paying attention, despite the fact that they're high schoolers and thinking about 8 billion other things. It's still a very, very valid venue. So, if you have the chance, take a look at our website, scope it out, and I'll be hanging around after all of the rest of my fabulous colleagues get the chance to say their piece if you have any questions for me right now. Thank you. Maybe we will see you virtually here in Cleveland, Ohio. Gamble out. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Um, now we're switching over to the Football Hall of Fame. So, Jerry, you want to take it away? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And appreciate you, Lee. And uh, I, I want to welcome everyone to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, my name is Jerry Shockey. I'm the Director of Youth and Education here in Canton, Ohio. And um, obviously, I'm biased because I'm, I'm, I'm in Ohio, and I'm an Ohioan lifelong from Alliance, Ohio. went to Mountain Union, born and raised in Alliance. Uh, but I'm, I'm a little biased here. But I'm going to say that Ohio has the best content across the country and all over the world. And you can see with Lee to, 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 to Coside, all the other folks that uh, that will either be connecting today or, or those that aren't even, uh, places like the Cleveland Museum of Art and places like that. There's just so much great content here in, in Ohio that uh, uh, bar none, the, the best state uh, for, for content. So uh, you guys have a, 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 just a wealth of, of resources here available to you guys. So. Um, I'm just going to here just to share with you guys real quick uh, as far as what we do at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So there's a variety of programs we do. 
Uh, same thing as Lee said that, uh, you know, we, we're, we're pulling up stuff to engage him, interact. So it's not just a talking head, switching between content, coming back, wanting into videos, asking questions, uh, sharing photos and, 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 and other stuff. Uh, just to keep them engaged, keep them talking throughout the, pro throughout the program. And so typically our programs are 50 to 60 minutes long. And we're, but by, by far, I mean, we do programs on uh, movement and motion of football, for example. So science of football, math of football, career, uh, character education of football. Uh, but by far our most popular programs are careers in the NFL program. And I'd say probably 70% of our the bookings that we have, we'll probably have close to, I think, 500 connections this year. Uh, and, and out of those, probably 70% of them are the careers in the NFL program. So it's pretty remarkable how many um, how many do that program? And because, because you ask your students in the classroom to raise their hands and say, how many of you like sports? And probably 70, 80, 90, even 100% of them are going to raise their hand, whether it's playing, watching, working, uh, whatever it might be. And so, uh, and so we like to just open their eyes up to a lot of the career opportunities that are out there in and around the NFL. So let me just go ahead and share it with you guys, just some of the ways that we work here. So you're going to see pop up here in just a second a map and so just to give you an example today we connected with schools in north syracuse we had three connections this morning it was actually a digital media class so not only did we do a careers program but we did a a, a careers program focused in on digital media so we went with social media websites just how digital media how co uh, content all those kind of things uh uh come into play uh production you know tv all those things that and when we talk about digital media uh, we talked about with this class today that there was a digital media class. But uh, to give you an example, this is what we do with the kids. Not quite as exciting in Ohio because you're like, all right, you're like 45 minutes down the street from us. But when we connect with schools all across the country and all over the world to do this, it's, it's pretty exciting. We obviously give them insight into uh, the Hall of Fame itself, give them a little tour of the Hall of Fame. Uh, but then we jump into our Prezi, our Careers in the NFL Prezi. Every one of our programs we open up with uh, is, is about the values of the game. And to us, it's the most important thing we share. No matter what program you're doing, we want to touch on our mission, vision, values here at the Hall of Fame because we believe no matter whether you want to be a, uh, a scientist or a plumber or uh, you know, working with an NFL team, there's underlying values that help people achieve greatness. And so just in my experience being here at the Hall of Fame for 20 years, working with guys like Jim Brown and Emmett Smith and Jerry Rice and flying all across the country with these guys as they talk to young people about the abundance of their heart and what football means to them, you see that there's a lot of underlying values to greatness. So whether that's a great football player or a great cellist or a great scientist, you see that there's these same core uh, principles involved, these commitment, the integrity, the courage, the respect, and excellence. And so we have some videos that we show on that to start things off. And then we kind of go through our mission, vision, values real quick, depending on how much time we have. And then we obviously get started into uh, the, the actual program itself on careers. And so obviously most kids, uh, you know, first thing they think of when they think of jobs in the NFL, they think of players and coaches. Uh, we don't dash kids' dreams, but we do. In a high school, when we connect with elementary students, middle school students, a lot of them will raise their hand and say that they're going to be a pro athlete. Sometimes you might have half the class that raise their hand and says they're going to be in the NFL someday. someday. Uh, we don't dash their dreams, but in some ways we do. Uh, in high school, we spin it a little bit differently. Most kids realize whether they're good enough or not or think they have a shot. Uh, so high school, we can dive a lot more in depth in, 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 into the education backgrounds, the degrees. Uh, and so there's certain things that we focus in on more with high school students, with, uh, with your students than we would with uh, younger students. But you can see there just for general consumption, it's the average NFL salary is 2.96, but the average NFL career is only about two and a half years now. So even if you are good enough to make it in the NFL, the fact of the matter is you're going to be unemployed when you're, uh, when you're 24 and a half. Uh, and not every NFL player is a millionaire. So um, with the league minimum being around six or seven hundred thousand dollars. So um, uh, you can see a salary co a salary for a coach, NFL head coach. Here's a day in the life of John Harbaugh we share just to show what the, you know what what the, the rigors are of of being an NFL head coach. But then we go into all the other jobs behind the scenes. One of the things we also share is just the odds of making in the NFL. You can go down the line there. You see at the top, according to the NCAA, a million high school football players. It's roughly about 256 draft picks every year. That equates to about 0.02 percent. Two in every 10,000, uh, one in every 5,000 high school football players make an NFL roster. And even if that only lasts two and a half years. Uh, so we always go into, you know, what are some other careers you can, you can think of besides that. So we have videos that were done by the San Francisco 49ers that interviews theirs. Like today, we got to focus in on really on the social media one. Uh, usually we, we kind of tap on each one of these uh, as we go throughout the program. So there's, there's those available. We also have some, just a, some examples of at the end, I'll kind of fast forward some of the stuff. Uh, but we go through obscure jobs in the NFL. Uh, we pulled each one of these out of the media guys the NFL teams have and pulled some unique job, uh, job titles. Uh, what's really neat, like today we connected with a school that was mostly Buffalo Bills fans, or at least in Buffalo area. Uh, we dove into the B Buffalo Bills media guide. Uh, this is something the teams produce every year. They're five, 600 pages long. That gives you just about any kind of information you'd ever want to know 
uh, about your favorite team. All 32 teams do it, but what's beautiful about it is every one of them has an active staff director. And it's probably going to be surprising to you guys that are tuned in as well uh, to see just how many people work for these teams. Now, Buffalo has one of the larger staffs in the NFL next to like the Dallas Cowboys. But if you look down, all right, there's one, there's two, you can see three, I mean, four pages of information. So what's beautiful about this program is we could connect with five-year classrooms in a row and all five programs, we might do something different because there's just so many jobs we could go into. And so uh, some careers that they're probably familiar with that might not need much explanation, some that they have heard of but might need some explanation as to the background uh, on some jobs that they probably never thought of. Like for example, uh, if, we, if we went back to, I mean, some of these like mailroom coordinator, skilled maintenance, parking director, director of flight crew, tax manager. I mean, just look at these obscure jobs that are in and around the NFL for every interest. I mean, there's a, there's a pastry chef, a pastor, a curator of our guitars. So just so many jobs. So what we close with, and especially if you like to focus on with the high school programs, as we can actually do as the kids will see here, I'll zoom in, ask them, hey, what did I search their NFL careers? Well, whether it's uh, your students uh, looking at uh, colleges or whether it's one of your teachers that is looking for a career change, we can always show you here. Uh, one of the websites here is, is teamworkonline.com where you can actually search uh, you know, job openings right now in the, in the National Football League. And you can see what those job openings are. And they aren't all the job openings because it depends on what teams actually go through. Uh, they're an HR company pretty much. Uh, they're out of, actually in Ohio, they're in Shaker Heights actually. Uh, but they, they uh, do um, uh, job resourcing for, for NFL teams. And so, um, so you can go in here, we can go to marketing. Let's scroll down here. One that's popular with the kids, social media producer. And what you'll find is, is you can find the job descriptions on here. So your kids can actually start looking at how they can gear their backgrounds, what college and universities to, to start uh, looking at, uh, because it gives duties and responsibilities. You can scroll down. And the last thing we always close up with is that we focus in on uh, the education. And you'll find, you know, unless you want to be a team doctor or an accountant or something very specific, athletic trainer, you know, some of those jobs over here that you see that uh, require specific. But if you're looking at general creative marketing, media and content, I mean, half of these jobs in business development, you'll find that in many of these job descriptions that I see in these job openings is that they just require a bachelor's degree. Uh, they don't really specify exactly what. And so we can go through that with your students. But one of the popular programs we go th uh, that uh, people choose is obviously uh, sport, sport management or sport business. I went to the University of Mountain Union. They have probably the best, uh, they were just wrote, voted this year, the best uh, sport business program in, in the state of Ohio for an undergrad, as well as top 10 in the country. And so, uh, but they can go through and look at the universities and colleges that have it as graduate, uh, undergrad, graduate, and PhD, and they can go through and, and look at those. So these are some of the resources that we have uh, for them. Uh, just to close things out, um, uh, all of our programs, uh, courtesy of what you see behind me, the Extreme, Extreme Networks, who might do some of your wireless and Wi-Fi in your schools, uh, they do it all across the country. Uh, our programs are free of charge. So whether you book one 50-minute program or you book 100 of them, uh, they are all free. So with that being said, I'm going to kick things back over to Tom. Uh, you guys can check us out at profootballhf.com slash education. So back to you, Tom. Thank you, Jerry. Great stuff. I uh, um, appreciate your time. I actually now can share a little bit about Cleveland Clinic's uh, education programs. My slide deck started here. All right, so uh, Cleveland Clinic has a variety of programs that we deliver through Connected Learning, and the Connected Learning experience is designed to have you, your students, interact with our Cleveland Clinic clinicians. And there's a variety of programs that allow you to get involved. Uh, we're going to start right away and talk about our wild, worldwide classroom. And I see Carrie Oliver's on today. Hi, Carrie. She comes in. Uh, her students do our worldwide classrooms, almost tried and true. Uh, we do these 18 times a year. They're on Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock. And they are uh, focused on careers and also on health topics. And the, uh, as you can see, we have every, a lot of interaction. Uh, we focus on a variety of different uh, clinical experiences for the students and uh, it, it's one of those programs that if you your students can get into it they will have a good, a good experience they will have an interactive experience uh, and along the way we'll also be teaching them about health and wellness uh, we had uh, recently a, a dietitian on and she was doing a game where the students were trying to determine the number of servings 
any uh, different kinds of food products that students are pretty much uh, focused on, like potato chips and M&Ms, bags of M&Ms. And I'll let you try to figure out how many uh, serving sizes are in a baked bag, bag of Lay's potato chips. Uh, but the students did pretty good. And as you can see, we, we use Zoom meetings when we do the uh, worldwide classroom so the students can see each other. And we will have live uh, questions uh, so that the students actually can talk to the clinician who's doing the presentation. And I, we really had a good experience with students feeling like they're part of something bigger. It isn't just a webinar where somebody's talking at them and they're not involved. Uh, and as another example, uh, recently uh, coming up in our uh, December session, we're going to have a, a team of therapy uh, uh, physical therapists, occupational therapists, rec therapists, speech therapists, and a, a physical therapy assistant. And one of the activities that they'll do is, and we're gonna do it right with you right now, if you could just grab a piece of paper and a pen, just write, and if you're left-handed, take that pen and put it in your right hand. And if you're right-handed, put that pen in your left hand. Uh, we would like you to, for the next 15 seconds or so, Try writing with your non-dominant hand. Try writing this sentence here. I am writing with my non-dominant hand. I'm going to do it with you here. I don't have that cool um, document camera like Lee has. Like yesterday, she was showing us how she was doing this. And her handwriting is very well, uh, very good, but in both hands. But give it a shot here. So try I am. And you'll see how quickly uh, you get frustrated writing. And what would seem to be a very easy process with your dominant hand becomes pretty challenging with your non-dominant hand. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely failing there. So uh, this is obviously an activity to give students some empathy as to how uh, people that have motor skill issues are, are affected, uh, whether it's something that's physical or something that is um, a, an actual uh, comorbidity of another um, illness. So, and here comes Lee. There she goes. See, she's show off. It, she, she's not even using her non-dominant hand. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Lee. <laughs> um, so, the uh, the the opportunity for the students to gather some empathy with Worldwide Classroom. We also focus on some of the the key standards of of good uh, uh, webinar technology, which is we tell stories, and your our caregivers will gross your students out, or they'll make them laugh. We sometimes do panels, like I said, with our OTPT, and they kind of get competitive about stories and, and how telling, you know, extremes that they, they experience with their patients. So uh, Worldwide Classroom runs on um, Tuesday mornings. It's a free session. Uh, you can join any or all of them, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, fortunately, uh, we can only do the mornings just in terms of pulling out our caregivers to do these activities. And you can see we have a pretty uh, diverse rundown. We don't just talk about doctors and nurses, but we try to show students other professions within the healthcare space. And for example, uh, we have a whole session with our health IT uh, staff, which they talk about network security. They talk about all kinds of uh, challenges with uh, 50,000 employees and managing all the networks and how doctors and radiologists want their x-rays right away and uh, how they have to deliver that and their, the pressures that they have in their role. Uh, another example, Dr. Moblin is our uh, a world-renowned kidney surgery surgeon. He will demonstrate a, a kidney replacement surgery. He narrates that process. But along the way, he also talks about all the different people that are supporting him while he's doing a kidney surgery and also uh, he's very focused on men's minority health issues, and so he talks about the issues that get you to that uh, situation where you would end up having a kidney surgery. We also do hot topics, uh, and don't be fooled, these are not just about the health, but they actually also are about the careers of all of the people that are involved. And for example, next week we'll have a nurse practitioner who is uh, no, I'm sorry, a, a physician assistant who's talking about pain and the opioid crisis and how uh, alternatives to pain are really a focus right now in our healthcare system. Uh, but we have a, a great rundown, everything from culinary medicine, where we have uh, Chef Perko who talks about his uh, efforts to have food as medicine, and all the way down to wellness, where we have a trainer who takes the students through uh, all kinds of information about their um, nervous system and trying to de-stress and how their phone is actually a big stressor. So lots of interesting programs. 
Uh, we also have a program called Expressions. Expressions is a uh, where science and creativity meet. Uh, so the students interpret research from Cleveland Clinic. It's some of its uh, research that's done by interns who come to Cleveland Clinic, high school interns. Uh, others is published research that's been done by Cleveland Clinic clinicians. And the students then uh, take that information and interpret it into language, art, and math projects. And you can see just from the picture, the students are working on a variety of different things. Uh, we get about 1,600 students that participate in this program every year. It is a judged program, so once the students submit their products, uh, we have a, uh, a judging panel of about 30 people across section of Cleveland Clinic that actually uh, judge this, the pieces. And then there's a, an exhibit where 200 of those uh, pieces actually are then displayed. And last year it was at the Global Center for Health Innovation. Big, big hoopla. And students win money and also teachers win money if you do the expressions program. Registrations are already going right now. It actually goes through next week. And then the students have uh, time to actually per, per, um, per, peruse the research and then uh, focus on getting that product that they are either going to do art, language, or math. And um, we have teachers that do this as a class. We have teachers that just uh, have one or two students, you know, that have shown some passion towards health science and medicine. So uh, if you are interested, you know, you can put your toe in the water with just a few kids. Uh, we do have schools where all the science classes do that. So uh, it's, a, it's a really creative output for the students, really great experience for the teacher in, in that we get a lot of teachers who tell us that it's one of the more creative and open-ended projects that they can uh, assign their kids, uh, which they appreciate. And then I'm just going to end on, we have a program called Ventures in Health Science and Medicine, and this is geared for grades six through eight. But I know sometimes high schools have uh, weird configurations. So if you have an eighth grade class or, or you're a high school, middle school com combined, uh, this is a 10 week case study for middle school students. Uh, where they meet eight, 19 different uh, professions. They do a capstone at the end where they are tasked to solve a, a authentic problem. Uh, and it's, it's a great program. If you know a middle school teacher, you are a middle school teacher, you deal with middle, middle schoolers. Uh, we have 16 slots. And that opens up in, um, we start registration in October. So if you're interested in that, uh, we appreciate you signing up. And that is it for me. Um, I, I'll be around, like Lee said, and, and everybody else that's on, that we can answer questions at the end. And thank you for your time. We hope you can join some of our Cleveland Clinic free programs and uh, reach out if you have any questions. And now I'm handing it over to... Uh, Info Ohio and Emily. So hold on, Emily, let me mute my stuff. So uh, thank you for having us here today. Uh, excited to be here. I do want to start off by saying, um, talking a little bit about the DLA experience, distance learning. I um, was a teacher for 20 years and now I work in my home office, which is where I am now. So um, Zoom has been great for us. Uh, it's a great way for us to communicate um, in the jobs that we do. Um, and so it's exciting to be able to use it today to really kind of showcase some of the um, career um, support that we have in Ohio, but also really to kind of talk about how um, tools like Zoom can help so many different careers. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And we will get started talking about some of the resources available from Info Ohio that, sorry, there we go, that really help um, schools as they are working with high school students um, to learn more about careers. Um, my name is Emily Rosmus. I'm an instructional specialist at Info Ohio. Uh, we are Ohio's pre K 12 digital library. So we provide uh, resources and tools at no cost to all of Ohio's life or Ohio schools, um, to their students, to the teachers, and to parents. So we're going to go through now a few of the um, different resources that we have. There are four major services that we provide, again, to Ohio schools, to students, parents, and teachers. Uh, one of those is digital content. So we license a collection of instructional content 
um, that is specifically selected to support the learning standards in Ohio. And all of this is available, of course, at no cost to Ohio schools, to the teachers, to students, to parents. We also develop web tools that help students um, learn how to use that digital content or to help teachers implement that digital content into their classroom. We provide professional development and support to schools across the state. We have both face-to-face -face and online digital training options. And we also provide um, library software. Um, this, we, we have an integrated library system that uh, provides library automation for over 2,200 schools in Ohio and over 1.1 million students in Ohio. Um, so that's how we started. Uh, we started over 20 years ago providing that library software to schools and automating the Ohio School Library. We're very fortunate today to have been able to expand what we do for Ohio schools. Um, one of the um, things that is, I think, one of the most impressive things is our new website that has really helped um, make everything that is on here easier to find faster than before as well. So one of the things that makes it even easier now is that we use geo-authentication um, and IP, IP authentication to automatically log in users. Um, if you find when you go to the site that you're not able, you're not automatically logged in, please let us know. You can do that at support.infohio.org. Um, but we're going to start today by going ahead and we're going to click the all resources button that's located right there on our, the home page of our website. One of the resources that we have um, is our, some of the ESCO databases. So when you click on the All Resources tab, you're going to come here to this page where all of the digital content that we have is displayed. So if you look at the buttons at the top, if you were to click there, you could go to narrow your search for resources by grade level, by subject, we have beginning readers there, and we also have career and exploration and planning, which we're going to look at a little bit more closely. Um, also from this page, you can access some of the specific ESCO databases. So one that we're going to look at today is the um, Health Source for Nursing and um, for Nursing. Sorry about that. That's one of the joys of working at home right there. Um, you can, if you click on the gray button that's right there, it's going to give you additional information, um, support and training, um, different flyers that can help you use that particular resource. So we're going to go ahead and look a little bit more. This is clicking on the I button for that particular resource. And you can see that this resource um, really would help you pair research, which is an important part of um, what will be doing as they're leaving school and entering the workforce with the topic of their of interest for their students. So if you have a student who's interested in becoming a pediatric nurse, for example, then you can challenge a student to use the resources that they have to also look up information that would be relevant and of interest to someone in the pediatric nurse field. Um, this resource for both students access to scholarly full text journal articles. And those will be written by academics and industry leaders, so it's always going to be good quality information for students to access. From the information page, if you click the, um, the training and support materials, you will find additional information on how you can use this resource and also integrate it into your classroom. You can share this resource directly if you use um, the Google um, Classroom link. We'll send it to your, your um, Google Drive, or if you use the um, LMS direct link to any other LMS that you work with. To access it, you can click directly on the um, open button, as you can see there. Another resource that we have, um, a web tool, is called iSearch. And iSearch is our um, discovery layer. When you use iSearch, you can search almost all of our digital content in one search area. So you can see here that we are going to um, 
use iSearch to look again into the area of pediatric nurse, if that were an area that a student were interested in. iSearch is really going to be helpful because it really helps students learn more about how to use a discovery layer tool, which is something that many of them will see if they choose a career that requires a secondary um, college or um, vocational school. Um, and they can also learn more about how to limit to find best results. So this is an example of the search screen that would come up if a student was using iSearch. They had a um, tabbed browse, browsing feature. Each of the different tabs at the top has the different um, set of results that it will give for students. Oops, I'm sorry, I went towards you fast. Um, we're going to look specifically at the advanced resources tab because that's going to be giving those students what they need in order to find scholarly journals. So once the student has done that, this has, has limited to um, use the tab for advanced sources, then they can look specifically over on the left-hand side at limiters. These limiters will help the student, again, find the information that they need. If they click here on their results limiters for whether they want scholarly um, journals or not, this um, option will bring them only those back. And again, students who are looking at going into careers um, that require secondary college will definitely want to have some experience with scholarly peer-reviewed journals. They can also use the sub-limiter um, to help narrow the, their search. And this, again, will help them practice how to find the best information to help them solve the problems that they have. Here you can see that um, choosing children's health will provide these students with specific information um, on that um, subject area. So this is the list of results that the student would have. Um, and then they can choose view and download to access that content. Uh, one other place I want to show you is where we started off before at the All Info Higher Resources. This is back on the home page. And if we click the All Info Higher Resources, we will end up back here. Um, and this um, area here, we worked closely with Ohio Department of Education um, using their Career Connect Connections Framework. And we curated um, some resources that will help support K-12 students um, as they're starting to think about what they want to do in their future. Um, so you can see here that the career planning is really organized to be aligned with the, the Ohio Department of Education strategic plan. And the goal for that, um, there are several goals. One is that they will, sorry, go forward. One is that they will um, enroll and succeed in a post-high school learning experience. So those are resources there that support students in a two- or four-year college. They can enlist in a military branch. If they want to serve in the military, they can search there. Students who want to um, go out and earn a living wage or be engaged in a meaningful vocation can look in this area. And then students who um, are, are already um, thinking about college can use the college credit support um, area there. And then there's also an area to learn more about financial aid and scholarships. One more tool quickly that we can talk about is educator tools. This is curated content from the web. You can see there's almost 80,000 results there. And again, this is a um, helpful tool that can be limited. You can search specifically under subject for career and technical education. You can narrow it by grade level. You'll find lesson plans, instructional content, activities, printables, all kinds of really good quality information curated from the web. Finally, to, to keep in touch with what's going on with Info Ohio, make sure you visit our Stay Connected page. Um, there you can sign up for our email list, our Info Ohio email list, and you can sign up for our newsletter. And if you have any more um, questions or information, I'll be around later after this, but you can also contact us, contact us at support.infohio.org. All right. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate that. And now we're uh, moving. And thanks for everybody for keeping up with their time. Uh, now it's on to Jordan at COSI. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Jordan Rader. I'm the Senior Manager of COSI's Interactive Video Conferencing Program. I'm going to talk a little bit about the distance, pro uh, distance learning programs that we offer. Um, we do use Zoom, just like the program that we're using now for most of our programs. Uh, it's very simple to use. Um, pretty much if you have a computer with a laptop, uh, excuse me, a laptop with a webcam and microphone, you should be good to go. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on our STEM connection programs. These are the programs that we offer for our high school students. Um, so we have an extra STEM in our STEM. It's uh, science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine. We do lots of medical programs here at COSI, so we wanted to throw in that extra M. Um, so these, are, these STEM connections are multi-point programs. That means they happen between COSI, your site, and several other sites. And these are all at predetermined uh, dates and times. Um, if you are local, some of these programs are available for you to come here to the building to participate in, um, but all of them are available as uh, remote participants, meaning you connect from your site. Uh, let's see. One thing that I wanted to point out about our programs is just like Lee mentioned, um, we also do send out kits of materials. Um, so here you can see an example of a, a program that we send out uh, for the in-depth autopsy program. This is the kit that goes with it. Um, one of the things that we love about these kits is are the student booklets that come with them. So here's just an example of something that your students might be using during one of our programs. So on one page we have um, a blank chart where we, they are asked to record information that they're getting uh, from the video as they go along. And then there is a comparison chart on the corresponding page so that they can actually compare those notes live as they go to see what similarities and differences they're seeing uh, in that particular program. Next thing I wanted to highlight is our um, online teacher guides. So all of our programs include online teacher guides and these uh, give you all the information that you need to know about our programs. So most of our programs are between uh, 60 and 90 minutes, but we always like to say, especially with that included kit of materials, that there's maybe two, four, six, or even eight hours of extra activities that you can do with the supplies that we are giving to you, just depending on um, how much time you want to spend on each of them. But we have our new teacher guides coming out uh, over the coming months here. We're very excited. We hope that they're going to be uh, much easier to use for our teachers and give them access to all of the information they need uh, more quickly and in a better fashion. So here's just a few examples of some of the activities that can come with our uh, programs. So for example, the um, virtual knee surgery um, is actually a flash-based computer game where your students will be walked through step-by-step -step, uh, cartoon animation of uh, a virtual knee surgery and they get to choose what instruments to use, choose where to make the incisions, they get advice from their virtual doctor and things like that. We also have an activity called diagnostic x-rays where your students will be looking at x-rays and comparing um, different types of bones with different implants um, different injuries, seeing what type of procedure they might need. Uh, so just kind of an overview of some of the different topics that we cover. Next, I want to dive into our program specifics. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about is in-depth autopsy. This program is presented by a pathology resident from the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, and they would be sitting in the seat where I am sitting right now, live here in our studio, and your students would be watching a pre-recorded uh, human autopsy that we recorded uh, at Ohio State. Uh, it's illegal in most places to broadcast a live autopsy, so we don't try to do that. It's pre-recorded, but that also means that you know exactly what you're going to get every single time. Um, so the pathologist would be seeing, uh, sitting here, and they would be able to narrate the video live for you, and you would be able to ask questions um, to the pathologist in real time, and they would give you an answer. You know, what is that yellow stuff that I'm seeing right there on the screen? And they would say, that is adipose tissue, that's just normal body fat. So that's just an example. It's a great um, two-way interaction there that we offer with all of our programs. Now, I, I do wanna show a few live clips of some of our programs, uh, again, but uh, they're, they're mostly medical programs. There might be a little graphic, so if you are squeamish, I would ask you to just turn your head for just a second because we're gonna show just a quick clip uh, from our autopsy program here. This is uh, a clip where they are um, infusing the lungs with uh, formalin. So they're filling up the lungs with the liquid formalin that they will use to preserve it and it makes them easier to cut. 
So they're going to uh, fill them up. You can see how much they're going to expand here. So you can see them, they start out pretty flat on the table there, but as they move through, they can kind of fill up, filling up all the spaces, those air sacs where uh, the oxygen and the air would go in as you would take a nice deep full breath. And then they would close that off and um, they would use that then full of that liquid as uh, to set, and then they would slice into it. It makes much better sections. So that's just a quick example of the, um, something that you would see during that autopsy program. And again, the pathologist would be sitting here explaining exactly what you are seeing. Next program I wanted to highlight is our in-depth kidney transplant program. Uh, this program was also done in partnership with the Ohio State University, and we have a recorded uh, living donor kidney refractomy, meaning that the uh, one patient decided to donate a kidney to another patient who needed one. And um, that program is, that surgery is also pre-recorded uh, with a narration from a, a surgeon from Ohio State. And that narration is also pre-recorded. One thing that we uh, like about this program is that we have decided to um, highlight the, um, the people involved rather than the kind of the anatomy. You still get the anatomy, you still get to see everything up close, but um, the person we have in studio now, live answering questions, is a person who has decided to give their kidney to uh, someone who needed it. So they are an actual kidney donor. They did a blind kidney donation, meaning they did not know this person. They just said, they walked into the hospital and said, I would like to donate my kidney to a stranger. And um, you get to kind of follow through their story and um, ask questions to her about her experience. Why did she de decide to do this? How did it impact her life in the short term, in the long term? Um, just things like that. So we, it's a really personal spin on this story um, that we really enjoy. I do want to show just a quick clip of the kidney surgery as well, just so you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. So this is an up close uh, video here. Um, so this is the kidney after it has been removed from one patient and is now being placed into the new patient. And you can see they're going to undo these clamps here after they have tied off the sutures and got all the um, arteries and veins hooked uh, up to this new patient. And as they do that, you'll see that the kidney turns from this kind of dull gray color into this nice bright pink color as the fresh blood rushes in. So I'm just gonna wait here a second for them to undo these clamps and we can see the color rush back into our uh, newly attached kidney there. So there we can see how much it brightened up. The, the kidney changed from that kind of dull gray to that uh, kind of bright pink color there. Uh, again, that was our in-depth kidney transplant. The next program I want to talk about are, is our brand new program this year. It's called Surgical Suite Sports Medicine. Uh, it's in conjunction with the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, um, Jameson Crane Sports Medicine Institute. And we are in the pilot phase of this program right now, meaning um, kind of in the uh, final stages of preparation. The program will launch officially in December. Um, we don't have any live footage from this yet because we actually haven't done it yet. Um, but I did want to show just kind of some interesting shots that you will be seeing during the surgery. So we can see a rotator cuff uh, repair there where you can see the damaged tissue. And then after they use the suture to kind of pull those things back together. One thing that we're excited about with that uh, program is the um, because sports medicine injuries kind of happen um, spontaneously and they're not planned, you, you know, we have another program, kidney knee, uh, to, excuse me, total knee replacement that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, and those are planned surgeries. You know well in advance that you have these, uh, you have arthritis in your knees and at some point you're going to need um, that surgery. For sports medicine, these in injuries are often happen right now and they need to uh, you need to get that surgery right now. Um, meaning that we don't know what surgery you're going to connect into. Um, it might be a, an ACL, a PCL, it might be a rotator cuff, it might be something with the wrist or hand or um, the foot, but um, we're gonna, you're gonna jump in that morning of the program and you're gonna figure out exactly what surgery is be, uh, being performed and why that surgery needed to occur. So we're excited to kind of offer that um, new kind of on the fly kind of surgery that we haven't been able to offer before. 
And then finally, the last program that I wanted to touch on is uh, one of our most popular and our longest running high school program, which is Surgical Suite Sports Medicine. And like I said, this is uh, a planned procedure um, where they would know in advance that you're going to have these knee replacements. And again, you would be able to uh, connect in live to our um, to our OR at, uh, this is through Mount Carmel East Hospital here in Columbus, Ohio. And if we could pull up a video of that as well. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that this video is about uh, two or three years old now, and we are happy to say that Mount Carmel has recently re-equipped all of their ORs with fantastic new HD cameras and lighting. And so we're actually really thrilled about the new quality of the video uh, that we're getting from them. Um, but this, uh, um, this pre-recorded footage is still from the old stuff. So uh, you can look forward to clearer pictures if you connect in live. One of the great things about this program are the people that we get to talk to. Dr. Politi has been doing this program with us since around uh, 2005. He's excellent on camera. He has a, uh, gets a great rapport with the students um, he's interacting with. Again, they always get to ask questions, not just to him, the, the, the surgeon, but also to everyone else around the room. I think right now we're speaking to one of the nurses. Um, Dr. Politi always likes to emphasize the fact that he does not work in a bubble. So he might get a lot of the attention as the surgeon, but there is a crowd of people in this room and all of them are important in making sure that the, the for the health and safety of the patient. So uh, we take a time, we take time during every program to talk about um, all of the different people in the OR, the, the PAs, the surgical techs, the scrub nurses, um, the anesthesiologist, uh, et cetera. So, everyone gets an opportunity to kind of share their story here. Um, I did want to just briefly mention uh, how to make a reservation for our programs. Uh, if you go to uh, cosi.org slash IVC, you can see a full listing of all of our programs and make your reservations there. And again, for high school, uh, you'll be looking for those STEM connection programs uh, when you go to uh, cosi.org slash IVC. I see I'm a little bit over time, so I did want to save time for questions, so I will turn it back over to Tom. Uh, thank you very much.